Welcome to the Gemini Diaries. I'm Aramis. I'm an artist and I'm a Gemini. Welcome back. If you are not new to the podcast, if you are, hey, hey, y'all like, let's talk about it. Why do I need to even say let's talk about it? Like clearly just the podcast, but I've been in my feelings. Okay. I've been, I've been in my thoughts per usual. Today is May 3rd and I'm feeling the lunar energies. Okay. So if you aren't familiar, I think it's May 5th. Is it, is it going to be May 5th or May 6th? is the total lunar eclipse. One of those, okay? Pretty much it's coming up. I was literally looking at the moon last night and it's already looking full. It's all, I'm already feeling the lunar energies and your girl is tapped in and there are benefits, but there are also benefits and consequent. What's the other side of it? (laughs) There's pros and cons to being tapped in. Okay. And whenever there's like astrological events, I be feeling like so open about it. I need to get back to my rituals. Like how are y'all rituals? How do y'all stay spiritually grounded? How do y'all stay in tuned? For me, it's definitely rest time. It's meditation. It's being out in the yard. Definitely exercise. You know what? That's what it is. I haven't been exercising for the past like three, maybe three to four days. Granted, I was on my period, but usually when I'm on my flow, I don't exercise the first day because it gets to be the most, it's like the most intense on the first day. And then after that, I get back to the gym, but I hadn't, I hadn't exercised my full flow. I did go to the gym today. So that's probably why I'm feeling a lot better and just in good spirits. Y'all movement is my medicine without a shadow of a doubt. And whenever I notice that I'm getting like just feeling off or feeling weird, one, I check the stars. I'm like, hold on, what's, (laughs) what's going on in the astral plane? Because they're, and usually whenever I check, I'm like, "Mm," it's usually something going on. It's like Mercury's in retrograde. What did my girl say? I love this other YouTuber. Um, she just be posting like random stuff, which I love. I just love like being a part of life with people, you know? Um, man, I forget her channel name, but she does like spiritual content and spiritual baths and like meditation, chakras, crystals, the whole vibe, right? She said, um, mercury and micro braids. I died left. So it's like, (laughs) because first of all, to sit, like I literally pictured the planet of mercury sitting in a chair and getting micro braids. (laughs) And it's like, it's like the most intense painful, slow process. So it's like, I don't even know if that's what she said to tell you the truth. And I had commented, so I'm I'm waiting for her to reply to be like, girl, did you just say mercury in micro (laughs) braids? Like, I just thought that was the funniest thing, but yeah. So mercury in micro braids, okay? Pluto in retrograde. Like, it's just crazy out here. So whenever I be in the fields, I check the planets and I'm like, yep, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. So I've been doing my movement. I've been doing my meditation. I've been getting back to it because that's what was throwing me off. I wasn't doing my rituals. I wasn't in my routine. And it just reminded me how important that stuff is, you know? And so one of the things that I want to talk about is not one. There's, there's, there's many. Let's dive in. One of the things that I'm trying to get clear on is... Just the plan for how I want to show up in the world as an artist in these new times. Y'all, I think part of my problem is that I've been consuming too much content in the search to find out who I am. And what I, part of me even like recording these Gemini diaries is for me to listen to this stuff back to myself. Like I listen to my voice notes, my, I think I I told you that before. I listen to myself whenever I'm listening to too many voices. I'm like, girl, shut that shit off. Okay. And listen back to what you said that you wanted to do, what your goals are, what your values are, who you trying to be okay don't worry about what's going on outside of you but granted right like we are human beings and we are you know like we don't we don't create in a vacuum so at the same time of me trying to create my own identity establish who I want to be as an artist in this 2023 AI tech social media world there's still benefits to looking around and, and getting more clarity and just like observing the people and things and technology around you So I definitely don't want to judge myself in that process, but I want to like tap in and tune in to what I want to do. 
So in doing that, it's also just been me trying to figure out, okay, not not figure out, girl, you're not trying to figure it out. You're creating. And I think that's the that's the narrative that I want to console myself with is that you're not trying to figure it out. You're not lost. You're not confused. You're not running in circles. You're literally creating. Oh, that was actually a good that was a really nice revelation. <laughs> like, because when I think about in my creative process and like when I'm painting, sometimes like I, I paint and I'll step away from it. I'll sleep on it. I'll turn the canvas in a different way. And I've given myself grace in the creative process to know like, no, I'm not lost. I'm just, I'm literally just playing. I'm figuring it out. I'm seeing how I want the face to look or how I want the composition to be. There's no like judgment in my creative process. I really let it flow, which is why just creativity is so fun for me. So I think I'm, as I'm kind of talking <laughs> to y'all about this. I'm also processing that I can use that same perspective in the creation process of my career and my public facing platform. Okay, so I talked before about um, actually in the very first Gemini Diary that was published on my main channel, talking about like, I think I titled it something, something with Sade in it. Okay, something with Sade and being like a soldier of love and like privacy and just really trying to be private, you know? And then the other thing, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Okay. If y'all are kind of in tune to the pop culture, social media world, then y'all might've heard about what took place at Coachella with Frank Ocean. Now I'm re I'm really not big into kind of like celebrity gossip. Now, sometimes I like tune in every now and again. That's like my little, my little guilty pleasure. I'll watch the impressive channel to see like kind of what's going on in celebrity news and pop culture, like every now and again, but this really stood out to me because me and Andy love Frank Ocean, okay? I think Andy loves Frank Ocean more than I do. Like he's more of like hardcore Frank Ocean fan. But for me, I'm like, okay, love Frank Ocean. Much respect for his artistry. He's definitely talented. Like I love Frank, okay? But so when I was hearing this stuff about Coachella and like, you know, all these videos talking about like Frank flopped and like, oh, like pretty much his fans. And I'm, I'm a big YouTube watcher. So these were a lot of his fans making videos about how disappointed they were, how upset they were. Like they were actually at the Coachella performance live and like all this commentary on Frank and his lack of Coachella. Performance. Well, the first day, the first weekend he did perform, uh, but the, and then the second weekend he canceled it. Even that first performance, it was only like an hour. He was an hour late. It was just, y'all, if you, if you heard it, you heard it. If you, do, if you did it, then you probably don't even care and I don't even need to go all the way into it. But part of it, I was looking at that and I was listening to the fans feedback. And I really like hearing from, from fans. One, I am a fan of so many different artists and creators. And at the same time, I am an artist and a creator who has fans, who have people who like look up to me or like are inspired by what I do. And so I'm constantly trying to figure out how to make a great experience for my community and for my fans, which as a as a visual artist, like the word fan feels weird. I feel like it, that's definitely more of a term that might be like, maybe quote unquote reserved for music artists, but not reserved because of course anybody can be a fan of anything, no matter what the industry is, but maybe we're just used to hearing the word fan for the music industry, you know, but um, in hearing the feedback from Frank's fans, I was like, oh, like, oh, and the people he was disappointed in was like his hardcore stands. Like I watched a video from a dude. One, his whole channel is dedicated to Frank Ocean. <laughs> like I'm like, damn, bro. Like, how do you even have this much content for Frank? Because he don't even be putting shit out there. Like he's like the most low key mystique private artist like how are how did you create a whole brand and a whole channel from frank ocean but hey you know hey like y'all know i love like commentary channels and like video essays and stuff on youtube so i just love when people dissect art and do artist interviews and like really talk about the process because as an artist i love hearing about other people's process and y'all probably know from my videos i love sharing my process and like different things but um let me try to remember to come back to that let me write some notes actually um so i definitely love sharing my process 
but I also want to talk more about the privacy aspect of it. Um, y'all, I'm trying to figure, cause like the thing about this diary, like let's have a real time conversation, just getting like real meta (laughs) here in regards to these Gemini diary entries. I just want them to be like, just like a stream of consciousness for me. You know, I don't want it to be too formal or me like really thinking stuff, thought process, but some of them, when I listen back to them, I'm like, man, girl, you went on a little bit of a tangent and you forgot to come back to that message. So anywho, yeah, maybe I'll start taking notes. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like y'all look, we just try to figure it out day by day. But anywho, so it just like really opened my eyes to, I mean, it, it kind of, I mean, sure. It opened my eyes to how artists can upset their fans because as a fan, I've been, have I, I don't know. I was going to say like, I've been disappointed by some artists, but maybe not because I feel like as an artist, I give artists so much grace because I want grace, you know, but when you do pay for a concert like I get it because the guy in the video he was talking about how he paid for Coachella like was saving up money and like people were sleeping overnight like just all the sacrifices that they made in order to see Frank live especially for an artist like Frank Ocean who doesn't perform a lot and so I think this they said this was his first live performance in six six or seven years, which is a very long time, okay? So if you are a fan of Frank Ocean and been waiting to see him for so long and then to see him on the Coachella stage, which is a very expensive festival, yeah, I can get being disappointed by his performance, by him canceling, like all the things. Now, granted, he is grieving the loss of his brother. I think he like hurt hurt his ankle or something. There was, there was a lot of commentary involved as to what took place. And I don't really want to go into that. What I really want to focus on is the fans. And, and I want to focus on the relationship that an artist has between their fans. Now, This is where it gets a little complicated because I created a video on my main channel and I think I titled it like, I will disappoint you. Um, And then maybe the thumbnail was like, I got to get this off my chest or something. And it can be difficult as an artist to feel like you have this pressure from your fans or like, you know, there's so much expectation, there's so much hype built around different things and it can definitely feel overwhelming, you know? But at the same time, I just, y'all, okay. If you aren't new here, then you know I'm a part of the beehive, okay? If you are new here, yes, your girl is gang gang Beyonce. And here is the thing. I like when you can't be comparing yourself to the most like to the rarest of the rarest unicorn in the entire world, you know, and what was interesting about this Coachella performance that Frank Ocean did, Beyonce kept coming up. It's like, y'all, you cannot compare Frank Ocean to Beyonce like they, like first of all, it's not it, it's not fair to either artist in general, you know. But they have two dip, two completely different styles, two completely different fan base, like just two completely different things, you know. And so and I have this um, <laughs> plaque on my desk that literally says, what would Beyonce do? I love it. It's a fun little little plaque thing that I got from this gift shop that's out here in Seattle. And so it's just like whenever I'm having doubt or trying to figure stuff out, it's like, OK, what would Beyonce do? Here's what it comes back to comes back for me. Girl, you are not Beyonce. Okay, like you you aren't Beyonce. You can't be comparing yourself to Beyonce out here. You can't move like Beyonce. So this is what I've just been trying to figure out. In the midst of me trying to get clear on how I want to show up as an artist, what is going to be my style, what is going to be my flow. And it's like, I've been looking. Okay, let's go back a little bit because this, this is all connected. Okay. So let me know if if I'm the only one who kind of do this, right? Especially if y'all artists out here, you're trying to figure out your brand and, you know, quote unquote, you know, like your, your sort of um, style and how you are, you know, your colors, your logo, like all, all the other shit that they say that we should be doing, right? Trying to figure it out. So I'm like, okay, looking at different people. Now, 
The problem was I was looking too much at content creators and YouTubers and I felt like that's why I was going down this trap of like the YouTube channel and like, you know, making reels on Instagram and, you know, trying to do the TikTok thing and like really trying to go hard with social media, which I think was great. It's been beautiful. It's been very beneficial for me. Personally, I love YouTube. I'm going to keep sharing on YouTube. Um, Instagram, I've just been getting, y'all, I've just been slowly slowly but surely falling out of love with that platform which is so upsetting because y'all this all started with Instagram it all started with the Gram fam but the app has just been making me want to claw my eyes out it is so glitchy that it makes it frustrating to even create on a platform but like whatever I don't even want to bring the energy down talking about Instagram okay but I was looking at content creators and social media stuff and like watching a lot of videos from YouTube advice and tips and sharing stuff like that. And then, you know, and so some of these like sort of YouTube advice channels and like how to grow your, you know, Instagram stuff, like all those different videos and all those different tips and stuff is more so sure anybody could use those tips. Sure. Anybody could benefit from it, but it was still like, I felt like everybody was talking about, okay, keep creating content. It's about consistency, average view duration, do the Instagram video, show up on TikTok. Um, and then like, okay, you know, add value and like create a course, you know, be this entrepreneur. And I'm like, create a course. Like I really, I really don't want to create a course. Like that's not what I'm like. I really don't want to be a coach. You know, like I was noticing, I was watching a lot of coach, you know, content creator coaches type thing. And after a while you start realizing that it's just coaches, coaching other coaches to become coaches and then it's just like this circle it's this cycle of content creators coaching to content creators you know and then as an artist you find yourself being a content creator and then you're like wait a minute hold on when was the last time I painted like hold on like a bitch been editing bit like she's been posting on TikTok she's been posting on like slow down who are you get clear on who you are you know and so that's why I just had to put like a pause on a lot of different things and now granted I've still been showing up on YouTube because I just love YouTube yeah I, I, I genuinely have a heart for YouTube because I feel like it's a place where I can just I can share the full story. Like even y'all listening to this, let me know, like, let me know where y'all listen to this. Are y'all listening to this on YouTube? Are you listening to it on Spotify? Are you listening to it on my website? If you listen to it on my website, that is so, so dope. Please comment on the blog. Let me know that you like, hey girl, I actually just clicked the little play button on your website. <laughs> Wherever you listening to it, thank you for being here. But um, one of the things that I just think about is YouTube is such a beautiful place for long format content, which I just love. So that's why I feel like, yes, I will continue. I will continuously share on YouTube. I think this is definitely going to be a long term platform for me. But and in continuously sharing, I've been pivoting my mind to like, OK, girl, let's not forget about the art. So on my main channel, you all might have saw that I did the paint with me video. And that was per y'all requests on the poll. That was the poll. Um, well, that was the response that had the most feedback for like, yes, we do want you to do a chill vibe playlist. So I was like, great, let's do that. Showing me painting. And then the other video after that was me sharing my inspiration behind the full collection that I just finished. The healing journey, the healing journey collection, which I am just, ah, I'm so excited about y'all. Like I feel, okay, so this is kind of coming back to all of that. Like I feel like I'm getting clarity and I've been trying to, nope, we changed the language. I have been gaining clarity about how I want to show up in the world. And I just need to continuously remember to come back to my own identity, come back to my own expression of self and remember to use these tools as a source of distribution and not 
as the thing in itself. You know what I mean? Like when I think about a content creator, the creation that they're creating is the content. When I think about a painter, the final product that they are creating is the painting. So I want to remember to make the painting and use these tools of Instagram, TikTok, YouTube as distribution tools to share my final product, which is the painting, you know? And, but, okay, here's the other thing that I'm like really excited about. I've been exploring the idea of fusing the two because I really do love video editing. And I just, I never would have even thought that I would like editing, you know? It's just, it definitely feels like another extension of my creativity. So I've been figuring out how to fuse painting and video editing and like having, and y'all probably see from my main channel videos, like I love to match my edits and my cuts with the music with like the beat and it just like uh it feels so connected like if it feels so like y'all I be straight up geeking out okay I like geek out in the process but like it feels um what is the what's the word like the brain there's like like when something syncs up it's like a brain connection, whatever, whatever it's called. Okay, It feels good in my brain to see things that are cohesive, you know, to have that sort of alignment in the creative process. And so stay tuned for that. I'm putting like a little bug in y'all ear that I'm working on something kind of special where I'm fusing painting and video editing and like having that be this sort of visualizer. But okay, I think I've already said too much. Just know your girl working on a little, she working on a little sansan. She working on a little sansan. And I'm excited to bring all of that together, you know, but in the midst of me coming back to the, to the thing, right? Okay, because the other thing I actually wrote down, I'm proud of myself, (laughs) saying that I do love sharing the process. Here's the thing. Sometimes I just want to go ghost. Some sometimes I want to go ghost. You know, like some I like sometimes I want to create in private and I'm learning not to judge myself, not to make myself feel guilty, not to be like, oh, well, well, oh, like maybe I should post this. Maybe I should share this. Oh, maybe I should grab my camera. It's so crazy that in this world now we feel guilty if we aren't sharing something like we like and not sure we should all share like sharing is caring but I'm talking about from a social media perspective you know like when sort of content creation becomes a part of your job it does feel weird if you're not sharing something you know you almost feel like oh maybe I should like pick up the camera and like record this or oh like this is a moment I should and I'm just like girl you literally don't have to share it if you don't want to you know the other thing is that sometimes I do So I'm just, I'm just giving myself room to be all aspects of myself, period, point blank. But okay, bringing it back to, yes, I love sharing my process, but sometimes I don't want to share my process and that's okay. But here's what I've kind of been battling these past couple of days. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know, I really haven't been on Instagram and it's been a little intentional. I've just been like, what have I been thinking about it? I've just been like, oh, well, I'm gonna just, you know, oh, I'm gonna just like kind of be be quiet for a minute and see if people like, I don't know. It's like, girl, don't nobody care that much. Like, don't nobody cares. You know, like, I think we be in this whole like, oh, let me, let me go, go. So they could be trying to figure out like where I'm at. What about, bitch, nobody care. Like when I be thinking, when I be seeing other people do that, I be like, girl, we all out here living our lives. Like, ain't nobody got time to be trying to figure out what you up to. Like, hon- like, honestly, now granted, the crazy part about this life is that there are some people who do be all caught up in people world. You know, shout out to my girl, Lynette. Um, y'all might, if you big into YouTube, y'all might follow uh, Lynette Atkins on YouTube. She kind of was the, like the person who was a part of that trend, I don't dream of labor And then everybody started making all these different videos and then commentary about the I don't dream of labor trend and all the things. It's so funny. I feel like a lot of people are actually watching her channel or maybe the the people who I follow also watch her channel because uh, I noticed a lot of people kind of copying her, which is funny. Like, but I guess we live in a sort of copycat culture. So it it kind of is what it is. But like, so she, I mean, let me just, <laughs> this is y'all, I just, hold on, not, not her throwing shade. I'm never, your girl never throwing shade, but like, 
it just blows my mind how people be like straight up copying her like from the thumbnail to like the titles so she just a little side note hey if you got time for the podcast like let's vibe out (laughs) so she just posted this video um okay the thumbnail said i left the title was I sold everything and left America and like moved out of America some, or like moved abroad, something like that, right? Um, she just posted that, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday. Literally today, this morning, when I opened up YouTube, two other people that I follow, like literally use that exact same thumbnail that said, I left. And then another girl I follow use that exact same title that said, I sold everything and left the country or something. Like just- Straight up copy paste, y'all. But I'm just like, wow. Okay, people out here like, hey, if the thumbnail work, the thumbnail work. If the title work, the title work. Like, hey, we all getting inspiration from somewhere. Okay, so just like, no shade, whatever. But um, what was I even saying that to say? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I was saying that like, like people don't care. People not so wrapped up in your world, like searching you and Google, like, oh, well, where is so-and-so? Like, where is so-and-so being? When I think about it though, Actually, people do. And I need to, here's the crazy part. I'm I'm reminding myself that yes, people do. Because a lot of the influencers that I do follow, they be like saying, hey, y'all, like, thank y'all for y'all messages. Thank y'all for y'all DMs. I know y'all been checking, like trying to figure out where I'm at, like what I'm up to, you know, like where I've been. And oh, and I was saying that about Lynette because um, she was actually moving because she, she had a stalker. Like a guy was, a guy came to her house, y'all. That stuff like that really, really saddens me and terrifies me. But I'm glad she's safe and I'm glad she's doing well. I actually sent her one of the silk scarves back in the day I think she was like she might have had like 50,000 subscribers at the time and it was like so sweet that she even like shared her address and sent and sent um me her info so that I could send her a scarf and she posted it on her Instagram and I sent her like a little paint kit and stuff yeah like she's she's like really really cool really down to earth but I remember when she sent me her address it was like an actual address I was like sis you need to get a P.O. box soon because like you you gonna grow you gonna keep blowing up and like you shouldn't be out here giving people your your address you know she was like no definitely yeah like I'm she she said that she was working on it she's gonna get a P.O. box she did which was great her channel blew up and I'm like yes I'm first of all congratulations girl I already knew that your channel was gonna blow up and I'm really glad you got a P.O. box because people crazy and so yeah this guy like came to her apartment so she said she think that he found her from her view and her vlogs and stuff. And so, yeah, now sis is out of America living her best life. So people do be checking for people. So it's like, I go back and forth in my mind, like, girl, ain't nobody checking for you. Like, whatever. Ain't nobody out here like, oh, Airbus hasn't posted. Like, what's she up to? What's she doing? And it's like, I mean, people do though. Cause I know I be thinking about some of my favorite artists and favorite creators. And like, I'll literally search their, their name in Instagram. I'm like, man, I haven't heard from da, da, da. Let me search, you know? So it's like, okay, girl, part of me be thinking like, oh, you not like, whatever girl, you ain't that special. Like ain't nobody, ain't nobody thinking about you. Like whatever. But then I, then I be getting messages from people who are thinking about me. You know? So I'd be like, girl, you are important. You are valuable. People do think about you, you know? So I don't know. But then it's also like, okay, here was the other epiphany. I love this. Here's the other epiphany that I had too. I get joy from seeing my favorite creators. So when I put myself in the fan position, so kind of going back to the sort of like how fans feel. When I put my, my when I put my fan hat on for like when I'm thinking about Beyonce or thinking some of my favorite YouTubers who I follow, seeing their content does bring me joy, you know? And so when I think about that, like when I think about not showing up for people, I'm like, girl, stop, get out of your own head. Don't worry about, oh, let me go go so people can be thinking like, oh, where is Aramis at? What is she doing? And it's like, okay, if you, who is that for? Who like why why are you doing that? Is that your ego? And when I think about it, I'm like, girl, that is like some ego shit coming out. Like, first of all, the people who you might be trying to do that for don't give a fuck. Okay. And the people who are probably checking for you want to see your content. So it's like those are actual people who 
who do like your videos, who do get inspired from what you're saying. So it's like, if you trying to serve out here, you hiding doesn't serve anybody. That's your ego just trying to be on some, oh, let me be on some exclusive private shit. Like, fuck that. If you really trying to serve and show up and help the world and inspire the world, you hiding doesn't serve anybody. And it actually does a disservice to you, your fans, your community, and that whole like mystique shit, being on that private shit. Now, granted, everybody like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Private people have the right to be private. I know at times I just be want to go under a rock, y'all. Okay, like when I when I'm in my mood, don't call me, don't call me, don't text me. Like it literally makes my skin crawl when I'm in a mood and get a fucking phone call. <laughs> like it's just like I be like, can people just leave me alone? Like I just be so irritated. Now that's usually when I'm on my period. Okay, <laughs> like a girl be like, no, I just don't fuck everybody. <laughs> okay. I'd be over it. I'd be over it. Okay. But when she feeling rational and when she's feeling chill, when she's feeling calm and when I'm thinking about actually serving the people, it doesn't, it's not in that whole, oh, let me, let me be on this cool shit. Oh, I'm cool. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm on this low key shit. Like girl, get over yourself get over yourself get over whatever sort of image you trying to put out on social media so that you can be on this like whatever like y'all I'm just like I'm just tired of that shit I I really am and I think the world is tired of social media too trying to be on like this whatever 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 we trying like whatever image we're trying to curate for ourselves it's like just be you and first you already know how I can't Y'all know I have no other choice but to be me. And so that's what you know what it just came to me right now as I'm speaking about it. That's what be coming up whenever I feel resistance It's because I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. You not Sade. You not Beyonce. You not any of the mystique. You not Prince. You not any of these cool mystique people who you it's like bitch you just not them. Okay. And you need to embrace it. You need to embrace that you are just that cool, chill, talkative, funny Gemini girl who just love to connect with people who love bringing the, the smiles, the hugs, and the sunshine. She love painting up your rainbows, glitter, and shit. So it's like, girl, that's girl, just be you. Just be you. Okay. And like, whoever listen to this, I want you to feel comfortable being you too, you know? And part of it, sometimes, y'all, we got to turn that shit off. We need to tune out whoever who trying to make us feel like uh, like our regular version ain't good enough and with everybody being so cool and shit it's just like man I don't know I think I'm just trying to give myself I'm, I think I'm trying to give myself full permission to be who I am you know and it's a constant struggle every day and if you're struggling with the same thing I want you to know that that you aren't alone as these platforms and social media and AI and as technology keeps growing, y'all, I, it's just going, I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to look like, but I think that we have the choice to be like, I'm about to be, I think, I think being yourself is a part, is is a part of the resistance, you know, like it's, it's almost pure rebellion to be yourself, you know, in the midst of everybody trying to tell us who we should be, what, what we should be like being yourself is the ultimate form of resistance, you know? And it's like, I'm about to be me no matter what anybody says. Like, I'm like, I'm over trying to create a narrative, trying to curate an image, trying to fabricate this idea. And I just want to be me, you know? And as I'm saying this, girl, you are being you. <laughs> like, what, what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like, this is what these are about. I get to just talk and have a stream of consciousness if it resonates with y'all I hope it I hope it brings love and light into your life and sometimes sometimes you just need to reaffirm that sometimes you just need to pour that idea back into yourself and that's what I needed right now y'all I just really hope this serves you I'm gonna keep doing these like like let me know let me know if y'all if y'all vibing out I'm gonna keep doing them because I be needing these messages just as much as the next person and I was going to try to put some sort of like date on it. Like maybe I could honestly see myself doing these y'all like three times a week. I really could because it's pretty much just me 
I'm sitting at the computer. I'm recording this um, directly into Adobe Premiere and like I edit it right there and then boom, get it uploaded on my website and then it automatically goes to Spotify. Then I upload it on YouTube and it is something very um, rewarding for me because it's pretty quick. You know, like when I think about editing a video, y'all, that takes days. It takes days, but it's really fun and creative for me. But I want to just, I just want to continuously share. And I also want to create, like, I want to, I just want to share this. You know, I think in the midst of me trying to figure out who I want to be or how I want to show up, the only people who we kind of have to look at and not have to, like, like we're forced to, but I mean, like the only people that we have access to be able to see is the people who are sharing it. And I think part of it, what frustrates me with the visual arts arts community, it's just always been such a private space. It's just been such this, like, you know, is everything is just like behind the curtain, you know, you just don't know. And sure, I think it's been intentionally crafted in that way. And that's fine. Like let people live like I'm. y'all know I'm the last person judging people. But I just I, I almost want a window like I want somebody who's sharing more of the stuff in the fine art world, you know, and now there's kind of positive and negative to that because it's like when you start, sh- I think that's. <laughs> I think that's what's been going on with social media. Like the influencers have showed so much and have shared so much and have given such an extreme blueprint that now everybody can do it. And now we're almost saturated with like, quote unquote, influencers and content creators and like all these different things. And I think that's also what happened in the coaching space. Coaches were sharing so much and giving so much information about coaching that now Everybody wanted to become a coach and there's like coaches everywhere. Shout out to Vanessa Lau. If y'all follow her on YouTube, she's an incredible um, coach who provides information about growing on social media and YouTube and stuff. But she recently shut down all her stuff and is taking a hiatus. So if you do follow her on YouTube, I don't think she's posted in like over maybe four months or something. But um, I think what she was, I mean, and I, I'm on her newsletter. So she shared a lengthy newsletter talking about what she was going through. But part of it was, of course, burned out a whole lot of different things. And, and I don't, I don't want to speak for her for what her hiatus was about. But in a previous video, she did publicly share um, that there were a lot of people like copying off her and like literally taking her content from her courses and just reproducing it and like downloading and copy and paste and just packaging up all the hard work that she did and now using it as their own. And I think that has been the frustrating part about like wanting to share information with people and then them just taking it and using it as their own and like literally just just plagiarism, y'all. Just straight up plagiarism. And in this copycat culture, it can feel discouraging to share because when you create from this authentic place and when now somebody can just take it from you, um, especially with TikTok, that's been a whole thing about like black creators feel like they're being stolen from and like different choreography that they make and they don't get the the accolades and the shine from it. And it's a whole, that's a whole rabbit hole. If y'all know about the sort of, black creator culture on TikTok. That was a whole conversation, but um, it's real though. It's, it's real. A lot of people steal stuff out here. And when you do give so much information and so much access to people, there is that vulnerability that can take place, you know? But I think when it comes down to the visual arts world, we are far from that. We are far from the oversharing process. I think that we need to share more and I want to be, I want to be a beacon of light for that, you know? And I feel like there's so many artists on YouTube, which is so great, but I feel like they, they aren't in that, they aren't in that like gallery and museum world. They're more, um, I feel like they're more in like the sort of YouTube art world, which is completely different. Like y'all, I'm, I'm gonna be real. Like when I see those videos, when I see those thumbnails, I'm like, yeah, this isn't a gallery represented artist who's exhibiting in museums. Like this is a YouTuber 
who was also an artist who's sharing their work on YouTube. You know what I mean? And like, I, and this isn't to, I don't have to put disclaimers. Like y'all, y'all, y'all know my heart. Like y'all know a you, you, girl not even doing that. Like whatever. I'm just being real about the different type of artists who are showing up on these platforms. And I feel like I just wish Kahinde Wiley had like a studio vlog. Like I would, I would love to see his studio vlog, you know, like what is he up to in the studio? Like, how did he even think about his idea for, for the Black Rock residency? You know, like what's taking place at the residency? And I don't know, y'all. I just like, I am doing, like when I get, I'm doing a motherfucking vlog. Like I'm, I'm doing a vlog. Like hopefully I can have permission to do that. And I don't know. I don't know. I really hope that I can. And if I can, I will fucking vlog every single fucking day because I want artists to know that that there's an opportunity to do this and like y'all I first of all girl calm down but this is something that I feel very passionate about you know and so I can't help but state the fact that we are inspired by things and people that we see and so when artists Oh, y'all, I saw somebody was pulling up. I say, hold on, don't, don't, hey, don't. No, it was just the um, UPS dropping something off. So when I, when I think about, um, you know, like what, oh, was, who had this song? Was it Two Chains or Future? One of those rappers or something said, um, I think the name of his album was like Rap or Go to the League or something. Yeah, it was like, it was like Rap or Go to the League and and that's pretty much what black men did. You know, like that's all they saw. So when you only see p- black men being successful by either rapping or going to the league, or if you, you know, depending on what area you raise in, if you only seeing people with money who sell drugs, you don't want to sell drugs. Okay, You know what I mean? Like, like we, we honestly are a product of our environment. Now we don't have to be like, there's, you know, y'all know how I feel about, mindset and law of attraction and shifting to da, 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 da. but I also need to be real with the fact that it takes a lot of mental discipline and courage to even overcome your external circumstances you know and so for me as a painter it was just in me to paint like I was surrounded by healthcare professionals and so that's what I saw so that's what I felt like I had to do but painting was always in me and now I can't help but the fact like when I moved away from Chicago and went to Seattle and saw working artists around me, that affirmed to me that that was possible. It affirmed to me like, oh, I don't only have to be a nurse or only have to be in healthcare. I could be an artist because that's what I saw was available, you know. But I think what I'm shifting into now is that I just don't want artists to feel like you only have to paint murals or you only have to do pop up shops or festivals or something, you know. Like it does, it doesn't have to be reserved for these like, oh, fine artists or like, oh, these artists who went to art school and have this degree or like whatever. No, you can be in these spaces too. And it's crazy for me right now. Like I'm in these spaces. I'm in these spaces. Like it's so crazy y'all I'm painting a painting that's gonna be a part of the museum of history and industry it's gonna be on display at one of the iconic museums out here in Seattle and I went to nursing school I went to nursing school like hear me when I say like oh my god like you girl like I just feel so passionate about this like I just want people to know that it's possible I want people to just see it you know and so I want to peel back the curtain now not peeling it but like not like bust the bitch wide open because I feel like when you bust the bitch wide open then people like that's why so many people in the music industry today I'm like man everybody wants to be a rapper and a singer you know and so you you do I I think there is there's a healthy balance right there can be a balance where you know you share you 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 communicate you inspire you motivate but I mean, I don't know. I think I think you can't you can't control that. There's nothing that you can do that can kind of people going to do what they going to do. OK, like if visual arts at some point get oversaturated, I don't know, like whatever. But all I know is that I just want to peel back the curtain to let people know also what this side of the artistry looks like and feels like and what can be possible for them you know so I just really hope this inspires y'all and encourage y'all on your journey whether you are artist or not or whatever I'm just here to bring the light and the love okay look I feel like I have talked long enough your girl gotta go to the studio 
and paint. Okay, get ready for the show. Make sure y'all are on the newsletter, aohamer.com. Um, scroll on down and sign up for the newsletter because that's where I'm keeping y'all up to date about all the shows and all the things that's taking place. Y'all, I'm just like so excited. Okay, I'm sending y'all all my love and my light. I hope that this has brought some joy and inspiration for you for your week. And we will talk soon. Peace out.